So the other day, uh, we discussed Kamala Harris at her rally. She got protested by some uh, pro-Palestine folks. And of course, they're super concerned over Gaza. They want her to have a total clean break with the Biden policy of arming and funding Israel no matter what they do. She apparently met with these protesters before her speech and said, look, you know, I'm open to your perspective. Um, let's set up a meeting for the future. And then after that meeting, during the speech, they protested anyway, and they said, uh, Kamala, Kamala, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Now, her response at the time was uh, disheartening to say the least, because she basically said, like, effectively, shut up, I'm speaking now, right? Like, if you want Trump to win, say that, but otherwise, I'm speaking. That was the gist of what she said. Now, in the wake of that, of course, there was a lot of commentary and... The left said, very simply, unacceptable, right? Unacceptable. If it's, if it's not okay to raise your voice in protest over genocide, then it's not okay to protest anything. Because genocide is the crime of all crimes. And that is currently what's going on in Gaza because we are funding Israel and allowing them to do it. So the next rally that she goes to, she's faced with something similar. She's giving her speech, and then you have some pro-Palestine protesters stand up, and they start doing their thing, and then now, this is her response. You know what? Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, everybody. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Here's the thing. We are all in here together. I'm, I'm told an extraordinary number of folks who are here together because we love our country. We're here to fight for our democracy. Which includes respecting the voices that I think that we are hearing from. And let me just say this on topic of what I think I'm hearing over there. Let me just speak to that for a moment and then I'm going to get back to the business at hand. So let me say, I have been clear. Now is the time to get a ceasefire deal and get the hostage deal done. Now is the time. And the president and I are working around the clock every day to get that ceasefire deal done and bring the hostages home. So I respect your voices, but we are here to now talk about this race in 2024. Okay, so I have a lot of thoughts. First of all, let's state the obvious. That is so, so, so much better than what she did the first time. I mean, that was a breath of fresh air compared to her first reaction, where she basically accused the people of wanting Trump to win and said, yeah, if you want Trump to win, then go ahead and keep protesting for Gaza. It's like, Jesus Christ, that's dark. That's such a dark, dark reaction. So this is, look, let me let me speak to that real quick. Um, I know you guys are concerned about this. I am too. We got to get a ceasefire. We got to get a ceasefire and we got to bring the hostages home, right? That's the right reaction. That's the right reaction. The one part I didn't like is that she said, oh, me and, and the president have been working on this. And it's like, Joe Biden is not interested in a ceasefire. He's not interested in a ceasefire. So now, look, if I'm going to uh, split hairs here, what I would say is this. And Adam Johnson has written a lot about this. And I think it's his his take and his breakdown is is brilliant. He says the way that Biden interprets a ceasefire is actually pure sophistry and pure goalpost moving. So when Biden says, we want a ceasefire, he doesn't mean the same thing that you and I mean and pro-Palestine protesters mean when he says ceasefire. He means, yeah, let's pause the fighting again and have the hostages freed and then effectively allow Israel to go back to bombing Gaza again after that. That's not, I mean, that's, you could say it's a pause. That would be a pause. But when we say ceasefire, what we mean is a permanent ceasefire. Right. And so then the question remains about Kamala when she says we need a ceasefire and we need to bring the hostages home. Does she mean it in the Biden way of ceasefire or uh, does she mean it in the sincere 
pro-Palestine protester way of ceasefire. And look, that's yet to be seen. I can understand somebody hearing this and interpreting it as, oh, you say you want a ceasefire, but you mean that bullshit kind of ceasefire that's not a true permanent ceasefire. I can understand somebody interpreting it that way. But I also think it's reasonable to assume it's possible she means a true ceasefire. Now, why do I say that? Well, look, Crystal has brought this up a million times. I think it's the correct reaction. Kamala has clearly shown inability to, short a, to sort of shift with the times, right? And, and um, react accordingly to the moving political realities on the ground. You could argue that's why she picked Tim Waltz. You could argue that's why she's out here now saying something very different than what she said the first time the Gaza protesters uh, interrupted her. And so it's possible that from a pure, hard-nosed, self-preservation perspective, a Kamala in the White House would say, I literally cannot keep arming and funding Netanyahu as he does this when it's very clear this is me hurting my own political chances for the future, right? That Netanyahu has made crystal clear in a thousand different ways. He's not, this is not the Israel of old where, hey, it's, you know, bipartisan support for Israel and they'll stay out of internal U.S. politics and whoever's in there, they'll work with them. No, Netanyahu is basically a hardcore neocon Republican. He is incredibly partisan. He wants Republicans to win. He wants Trump to win. And from a pure, raw political partisanship perspective, she probably recognizes that and realizes I got to distance myself from this guy and I got to make it more difficult for this guy because if I keep facilitating what he wants to do, then my own political career is going to get damaged. So in other words, from a very hard-nosed, realistic perspective, an ass-covering perspective, Kamala could look at this and genuinely have a different policy and a different reaction to Joe Biden. So, look, you have to give credit where it's due in the sense that the commentary was way better than what it was last time. And she shifted with the political realities, as she should, right? Maybe she has some good staffers giving her good advice. Maybe this was just her own gut intuition. Um, so it was way better. But let's also not fool ourselves in that um, we don't exactly know what she means when she says, I want to cease fire and we need to return the hostages. If she means it in the Biden way, it means nothing. Pause fighting for a week or two, maybe three and then allow Israel to go right back to it. The reality is, if you really want to get her on the record in a concrete way, and I think every pro-Palestine activist knows this, the bare minimum thing that she has to commit to is cut off the weapons to Israel, or at the very least have the credible threat of cutting the weapons off, which then forces them to not do what they're doing, right? So again, I'm not here to rain on everybody's parade. I'm not here to burst everybody's bubble. I'm here to tell you the truth. And the fact of the matter is, a way better reaction than the first time. I wish she did this the first time. Um, she She's doing the right thing now, saying the right thing now. And at this point, we just need to keep applying pressure and also hope that when she says, I want a ceasefire, it actually means true permanent ceasefire. And it's not the bullshit Biden view of a ceasefire, which is not really a ceasefire at all. It's a cynical ploy. It's a PR and marketing strategy to try to get the left base off their ass while they continue with the status quo. So we don't know, but time will tell. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.